Today I'm going to try and teach you about plastics. Uh, the simplest way is to actually just draw them out. And the plastics, the technical term for that uh, is polymers. Now polymers are made from monomers. So, monomers to make polymers, many. So, single uh, to make many. And you might think, well, monomers, polymers, just new confusing terms. Well, not really when you think about it, because all the monomers are, are structures that you've seen before, which are the alkenes, the carbon to carbon double bond compounds. So the simplest one, which I've just put uh, to go diagram off, is ethene. So if I write in ethene, so that now are, these both are ethene monomers. So ethene goes to form poly, polythene polyethene, okay? So you've started, but the terms they use in the exam will be monomer to polymer, so it'll be ethene monomer to form polyethene. Now the simplest way to draw these out is to number your carbons. So in this case, on the left hand side, you've got one, two, three, four carbons in total, and on the right hand side, you've got four carbons. So for example, carbon one here, carbon two, three and four. So on the right hand side again, carbons one, two, three and carbon four. Now if you look at what's attached to each individual carbon, so for example carbon one has attached to two hydrogens, top and bottom, all right? and the same with carbon two, hydrogen there, hydrogen there. So on the right hand side, attached to carbon one, we've got hydrogen top and we've got hydrogen at the bottom. All right? hydrogen at the bottom. And then carbon 2, we've also got hydrogen at the top, hydrogen at the top, hydrogen at the top, and hydrogen at the bottom. Right? And the same if you look for carbons 3 and 4. Hydrogen at the top and the bottom, and the hydrogen at the top and the bottom. So again, you can fill hydrogens in. Right? So, Now, common mistakes in the exam are firstly to draw in the carbon to carbon double bonds all along on the right hand side on your polymer. That is wrong. You will get, definitely get no marks. So, what you mustn't do are put carbon to carbon bonds there. That is wrong. And another mistake, a common mistake made by students, is to put hydrogens at the end. That is also incorrect. You must leave those blank, but you must draw the bonds in. You must put the bonds in, but leave them blank. That's so, if there are any more monomers, they'll go in and fizz at either side. That's to just allow the chain, the polymer chain, to increase in length. Now polymers, and in this case we've got ethene making polyethene. And use of polyethene are like carrier bags, kitchenware, like washing up bowls. Okay, so they're the most common uses of polyethene that you'll be asked about. Another example that you may come across is it's not so easy now, where they haven't got, just got hydrogens on, but they start changing the little groups. They start replacing the hydrogens, but little other groups in. Another common example is not using ethene anymore, is to use propene. Okay? Now, as the name suggests, you just put a poly in front of it. It's not polyethene anymore, it's polypropene. Polypropene. But we need to change the structure to make polypropene. So, what I'm going to do, just change one of the hydrogens for CH3. And again, CH3 on there. Right. And now, if you again look at the number in the carbons, this is where numbering your carbons is important. Because now you haven't just got hydrogens present, you've now got a CH3. Okay? You've now got a, you've increased your number of carbons. So, we've got Carbon 1 is still hydrogen top and bottom. Carbon 2, however, has got a CH3 and a H at the bottom. So, you go across to your polymer, carbon 2, pointing up, you change that for a CH3. All right. Carbon 3 remains the same. Carbon 4, you change it for a CH3. And there, you have polypropene. 
polypropylene, a tougher plastic than polyethylene, using milk crates and car batteries, for example. It needs a tougher kind of plastic. And finally then, um, another type of exam question that you could be asked is the general formula of a polymer or the monomer. Now, in theory, you could have many monomers uh, to make your polymer. Right? You're not going to start sit there in the exam writing out 20, 30 poly uh, monomers in a row uh, and then polymers. Right? So what they ask you for is a general formula. Where how often does the polymer repeat itself? So in this case, uh, I'll leave up uh, vinyl chloride. What you do, just simply put a bracket around it and you write an N. Now that is the general formula of your monomer where N can be any number. Right? And the same applies to your polymer. Draw the brackets round. Okay. And, and you put the N again on your polymer. Now, common mistakes, again, remember it's all single bonded, there's no double bonds. All right? The bonds at the end of the your polymer unit that starts and at the end, they must go over the bracket okay, to show that other monomers can join on. And all the bonds now, when they're at an angle here on the left hand side, now become straight up. But again, number of carbon, so you don't mix up which uh, group goes on what. Right? So, for example, again, carbon one, two hydrogens, carbon two, chlorine, and hydrogen. Again, carbon one, hydrogen, carbon two, chlorine, and hydrogen. Now, if you're asked any examples or any monomer, just follow those simple rules and you won't go wrong. But make sure you check your exam specification, you practice the exam questions and you ask your teacher.